Hi everybody, Will Doublestein here, and today we're going to be talking about the symbols, symbols of, of notation. notation. Okay, enough of that. <laughs> Do you know what notation is? See, notation is just written symbols. And you can have notation uh, anytime you're writing a story, like the letters, the punctuation would be the notation. And what you do is you take those letters and you create words, sentences, paragraphs, and you take that punctuation and you put it in so that you can communicate an idea to the reader. Well, in music, we use written symbols representing music, okay? Things like notes and rests and treble claps and lots of different symbols to communicate an idea which is a piece of music. And when a performer looks at that piece of music, written out music, written symbols of notation, they'll know how to play it and what to do in a performance. So today what I want to do is I want to practice writing different symbols of notation. So what I need you to do is press pause on this video, grab a piece of paper and a pencil, and then come back. All right? Ready? Press pause in three, two, one. Did you do it? <laughs> I hope so, we'll see. Okay, hopefully you've pushed play, all right? Let's start with a staff. Now, a music staff is five lines that go across a page of music. Usually we have five line staffs, but it is possible to have one line staffs or different uh, numbers of staffs. But usually in most music we have five horizontal lines that go across a page of music. And what's cool about my classroom is in my whiteboard right here, I have a couple five line staffs, right? And so we're going to use those um, as we talk about other symbols of notation. So right now on your paper, draw a staff. It can be a short staff, it can be a long staff. You can do multiple, we call them staves, okay? Where you have more than one group of five lines, but go ahead and draw that on your paper. Our next symbol of notation is bar lines. And bar lines are the up and down lines that separate a staff. So, for example, if you look at this staff right here on the board, okay, we might put a bar line here or here, and we could keep going. And everything in between the bar lines are called measures, okay? So the staff is the horizontal lines, the bar lines are the vertical lines. Did you write in some bar lines on your staff? Next one is a treble clef. Okay, treble clefs mean that you are gonna be using mostly high pitches, okay? And treble clefs are kind of difficult to draw. I'm gonna try and help you, okay? Start at the bottom of your staff, and maybe even put a dot down there, okay? And what you're gonna do is you're gonna go kind of down and up like this. Once you get to the top, you're gonna move to the right and then to the left and swirl it back over. I told you it wasn't easy. All right, this is probably gonna be the most difficult symbol of notation we have to draw. So I want you to take some time and really practice, okay? Again, you're gonna start below the staff, okay? Bring it up in a straight line. Another way to think about it is it's like you're making a D here, and then you're making a big C here, and you bring it around like that. Treble clap. Draw some treble claps on your page. Pretty soon you might be able to get more fluid with it, like that one. And you know what? It's okay if your treble clef doesn't look perfect. Mine don't either. Pretty soon, if you practice enough, you'll get pretty quick at it. 
draw as many trouble clefts as you want on your paper. Again, a treble clef means you're gonna be using high pitches. But what if you need a lot of low pitches? Well, for low pitches, we use this thing called a bass clef. A bass clef kinda looks like a frowny face on its side, see? So sad. So here's how you do a bass clef. Basically, you start, mm, Maybe here on the top space, you just do a curve, like that. It's almost like half a heart. But you also need these two dots, okay? And the dots happen on the top two spaces. They kind of look like eyeballs. So, draw some base clefts. Again, they don't have to be perfect, all right? Go ahead. Well, up next, let's talk about a time signature. Okay, so imagine you already have a staff, you already have some bar lines, you already have a treble clef. Remember that I said all the space between bar lines is called a measure? Well, you need to know how many beats fit inside of a measure. And that's what the time signature tells you, okay? The top number tells you how many beats will fit in that measure, and the bottom number tells you what kind of a rhythm uh, gets the beat. So a four refers to a quarter note. That means that if you have a four, four time signature, you have four, beats, and each beat can be filled in by a quarter note, okay? Now, in my classroom, I like to draw in the notes to or draw in the beats using a heart, okay? Now, you, you may, your teacher may not do this with you, but that's at least what I like to do, is we use hearts at my school to represent beats, okay? So, I'm actually gonna move this bar line over a little bit. Okay, and if there's four beats, I might even draw in four hearts. Okay, there's lots of different time signatures you might use. You might use 6A, you might use 3-4 or 2-4, but most music in elementary school is written using a 4-4 four, four time signature. All you have to do is right after the treble clef, put two fours. Okay, did you practice that? Good. Let's move on to our next symbol of notation. It's called a double bar line. Now, double bar lines happen at the end of a piece. So it's basically like a big giant stop sign. And all you do, is add a second bar line, and that way the performer knows you're done, you're finished, stop, that's the end. The song is over, okay? That's a pretty easy one, I'd say. Just a second bar line. One, two, double bar line, it means stop. Let's move on, okay? A repeat sign is just a double bar line with two dots, all right? And that means that you're going to repeat whatever came before it. Repeat signs, just like double bar lines, are really easy to draw. You just need a double bar line with two dots, and they go in those middle spaces. Okay? Okay. Our next symbol of notation is a quarter note. Okay. In my picture here, I have the quarter note drawn inside of a heart. And that's because quarter notes take up one beat in a 4-4 four, four time signature. So, you, as you write it on your paper, are welcome to write anywhere you want, on a staff, off a staff, okay? I want you to draw a quarter note. Now, I like to start with the note head. The note head is the circle part of the note, and then I add the stem, or the vertical part of the note. That's a quarter note. One of the problems, though, that my students have 
sometimes when they're drawing quarter notes is like if they want to put it on the line, sometimes we have to define what it means to be on the line. So for example, if I want to draw a quarter note on this top line of a music staff, sometimes my kids think that I mean like this. But that's a problem, okay? Because that's actually above the line. What we want in music is when we say to put something on the line, it means to literally put it on top of the line. So when you write a quarter note, it shouldn't be above the line, it should be covering the line. And that's a big difference, okay? Because when we're dealing with melodies, you need to know if quarter notes are on lines or in spaces, okay? If you think that this quarter note is on a line because it's sitting on top here, it'd actually be wrong. This is actually in a space. So I want you to practice even now making a line or on your staff drawing your quarter note with the note head covering that line. That's what it means for a quarter note to be on a line, covering it, okay? It's like your perspective is not above, it's not thinking like this way where it's above the line, you want it to be like you're looking down at it and that note is literally covering the line. Okay, up next is a quarter rest. Now quarter rests are pretty tricky to draw, just like uh, treble clefs. But the good news is there's a trick when you draw a quarter rest. And the trick is this. Start by drawing a Z. Then, at the bottom of the Z, draw a C. Quarter rest. See? A Z and a C. That's a good way to do it. Now I have my quarter rest inside of a heart because quarter rest, just like quarter notes, fill in one whole beat. Now it's a beat of silence, but it still gets a beat. Why, you know what, why don't you write a couple quarter rests? These can be tricky, you might need some practice. So a Z and a C, a Z and a C. That's what a quarter rest looks like. Our next rhythm is two eighth notes. Now two eighth notes are shorter rhythms. In fact, they're short enough that you can fit two of them inside of one beat. See, the note head refers to the note. So if you have two circles or two note heads, that means you have two notes. You don't wanna get confused and think that this is just one note, it's not. It's two notes, but these two notes are connected. So when you draw it, on your paper, whether you're drawing it on a staff or not, I like to start with the note heads, and then I draw the stems, and I connect it with one bar. The bar is the horizontal line on top, this part right here. So you've got note heads, you've got stems, and you've got bars. Go ahead and draw that on your paper. Up next, one eighth note. Whoa, this looks weird. Okay, so the thing about one eighth note is one eighth note only fills in half of a beat. So before, if you had two eighth notes inside of a full beat, one eighth note would just be half. And it looks a little bit different. You're still gonna draw your note head on the line or in a space. You'll still put the stem up. You still need a bar, but this bar doesn't connect to anything. So it's just like a tail that hangs down. See that? And that's because eighth notes only get half of a beat. If you were to put two together, that would be a whole beat. But they'd be broken up. All right. Sweet. Let's keep moving. Next, we have a half note. Now a half note looks very similar to a quarter note, but the difference is it's empty on the inside. 
So instead of filling in your note head, you're just gonna do a circle with a stem, and that lasts for two beats, half a measure, okay? So that's why my half note has this little line here. It's just showing that it's taking this beat plus this beat. Go ahead, draw some half notes. Okay, after the half note, we've got half rests. Now, to me, a half rest kind of looks like a hat. And that's helpful for me to remember because you can think half note, hat, or half rest, hat rest. See, it almost looks like a little top hat, doesn't it? All right, and what you're gonna do with this rest is you're gonna find a line, the middle line, on your staff, so if you have five lines, the middle line, and you're gonna draw the brim of the hat right like that, and then you're gonna put a box on top. Okay. This is a half rest. It takes up two beats, just like a half note, and that's why I have two hearts here, is to show you that a half rest takes two beats, but two beats of silence. Okay, next let's talk about whole notes. A whole note looks like a half note, but without the stem. It's just a circle. And a, this whole note is gonna actually take four whole beats. One, two, three, four. A whole note does take four whole beats. It takes the whole measure. That's why we call it a whole note. We've also got whole rests. Now a whole rest, is similar to a half rest, but I don't want to get confused by thinking this as a hat again. Instead, I want to think of something completely different. And to remind me of the word whole, I think of Mario. You know Mario, the plumber guy? Yeah, he's a red guy. He goes into those green tubes, doesn't he? Well, to me, this almost looks like one of those tubes that he goes down. And you can think of Mario going down the hole. So a whole rest is like he's going down the hole. Do you get it? It's like Mario going down that green pipe. Now, when you draw this, again, you wanna start on that middle line, make the brim of the hat, and then the rest of the hat, you'll fill in like this, okay? Or think of it as Mario's tube. He's going down the hole, all right? That is a whole rest. Okay, we're getting into some more complicated symbols and notation here, kids. So uh, next one, called four sixteenth notes. I know there's four of them because I see four note heads. One, two, three, four. Don't get confused and think that that's one note. It's not, it's four notes. Okay, again, you wanna start with your note heads. One, two, three, four. And just like we did when we made uh, eighth notes, we're gonna draw our stems next and connect them with a bar. But this time, because they're 16th notes, you need two bars, like that. So make sure as you write out 16th notes on your paper that they have two bars connecting those four notes. Now 16th notes are really short notes, so you can fit four of them inside of one beat, and that's why I have them all listed in this one heart. I actually really like drawing 16th notes. Why don't you draw a bunch of them? Four 16th notes. Now fun fact. If you ever want just one sixteenth note by itself, it looked like a lot like one eighth note, only instead of having one little flag hanging down, you'd have two, because it's those two bars that have been split up. Yeah, sixteenth notes, they're pretty fun to draw. Okay, next one. All right, we're getting more and more complicated here. This might be really complicated, especially for you younger kids. And don't think you have to understand everything today. 
Don't worry, you keep practicing, you'll keep learning about it, and it'll get easier and easier as you go, okay? With age, you learn more and more. So maybe you're just ready for quarter notes, quarter rests, and eighth notes. Or maybe you can get six to sixteenth notes, but maybe you can go even further. And for those of you who want to go further, I want to show you some special notes. For example, three triplet notes. That's right, friends. You can fit three notes inside of one beat, but you've got to use a triplet, okay? There's actually three notes here. You can count up the note heads. One, two, three. Three note heads. But what's special about triplets or triplet notes is when you write them out, you do your note head, you do your stem, you only do one bar. But over top, you have to put the number three, okay? And if you really want to get fancy, you add these brackets. And that's how we refer to not having like three eighth notes together, but having three triplets, which are slightly different. Because instead of squeezing two eighth notes into one beat, you're squeezing three slightly shorter notes, triplet notes. Triplets. Go ahead and take some time and write in some triplets. By the way, triplets um, are kind of fun to perform. Uh, there's lots of different ways you can clap triplet. The, the way I do it is like this. Triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. Triplets. Okay, our next symbol of notation, a dotted half note. Take a normal half note, how many beats does it get? two beats. It's half of four beats, which is a whole measure. So half of the measure, two beats. Okay? But if you add a dot, in fact, if you add a dot to any note, it adds half the value of that note. So if a normal half note gets two beats, you add a dot to it, well, what's half of two? One. What's two plus one? Three. Three beats. A dotted half note looks just like a half note, but a dot next to it, and it lasts for three beats. Go ahead and uh, write a few dotted half notes. Three beats. Okay, we're getting really complicated now. These are called one eighth, two sixteenth note pairs. Boy, that's a mouthful, isn't it? But I want to explain. It really makes a lot of sense. Imagine you had a beat and you cut it in half. Now, one thing you could do is in the first half, you could put one eighth note, because we know that one eighth note fills in just half of a beat. Well, in the other half of the beat, you could add these two sixteenth notes. Two sixteenth notes, remember four sixteenth notes fill up a whole beat? So if you just want half a beat, that'd be two sixteenth notes. Well, you can connect these. So you can have an eighth note plus two sixteenth notes, and that would fill in the full value of the beat. Now, how you would count this? Well, there's a few different ways. One way is to do T ticka. T ticka. T ticka, T ticka, T ticka, T ticka. Another way to do it using the number counting system would be one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a. But the way you draw it is you start with your note head for the eighth note, and then two note heads for your sixteenth notes. But when you connect them, the eighth note only gets one bar, and the sixteenth notes get two bars. That's a 1 8th, 2 16th note pair. They can also be called broken 16th notes, okay? 1 8th, 2 16th note pair, 
one and a two and a three and a four and a or t ticka t ticka t ticka t ticka. And our final symbol of notation is very similar, but the opposite. It's called a two sixteenth one eighth note pair. So look, if here we started with an eighth note and ended with two sixteenth notes, we're just gonna flip it. That's right. Start with the two sixteenth notes, end with the eighth note, and you get tick a t, tick a t, tick a t, tick a t, or one e and, two e and, three e and, four e and. You just draw it the opposite way. You start with your two sixteenth notes and you add an eighth note. Just make sure that the two sixteenth notes get two bars because after all, sixteenth notes get two bars and eighth notes get one bar. So maybe it'd be fun to draw a bunch of different sixteenth eighth note pairs. Maybe some like this, some like that. These are starting to get more and more complicated but there's lots of different things you can do with them. And lots of music uses eighth and sixteenth note pairs. Okay? Maybe we'll end this one like this. Well kids, I hope that you've enjoyed learning about these symbols of notation and it's my hope that through practice drawing them, you might be able to compose your own music someday. You'll be comfortable knowing how each note sounds and how each note looks. And so friends, thank you for sticking with me for today's lesson on the symbols of notation. Thanks guys. Thanks, guys.